Hello, Mr. Barton here, and welcome to a video all about my very special 20 topic GCSE Maths revision plan. Now, I'm going to promise you three things at the outset here. Firstly, it's dead easy to set up, and I know everybody says that, but I promise you it's true. Uh, secondly, it's going to save you a load of time as a teacher, because all your marking is going to be done and all your data analytics are going to be done. And thirdly, it's going to really help prepare your students for the demands of this GCSE. So that's the plan. It's all completely for everything I'm going to show you and hopefully you'll find it dead useful. So get yourself to diagnostic questions and sign yourself in. Uh, now I'm going to use uh, a little test account I've set up. Harry Potter connoisseurs uh, may be loving that username. And when you log in, you get taken to the diagnostic questions dashboard. Now, depending on how much you've done on diagnostics will determine how much information you see here and so on. But the key thing is I want you to go to the left hand side of your screen and find the scheme of work section and give that a little click. Now, again, depending on what you've done on diagnostics, you may actually already have adopted some schemes of work or it may be blank like mine. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, so what I would like you to do is hover up to the plus button, give that a plus, and I'll just move my annoying face out of the way. And that'll show you a list of all the different schemes of work that are available. You may have some of these, you may not have some of these, but hopefully you've all got this one at the bottom. AET 20 weeks to go scheme of work. Give that a little click, click done, and you have officially adopted that scheme of work. Now, what does it look like? Well, there are 20 topics and it's one topic per week. And if you're immediately panicking, saying, flipping heck, what have I got to do? Go back in time to November. Don't worry about that. I'm going to show you how you can manipulate that dead easy in a second. So there are 20 topics, 20 weeks, um, and they cover all the main basic skills. This scheme of work is aimed at students sitting the higher tier GCSE, but it doesn't cover like the kind of level nine stuff. It's focused at kind of level or grade six and above. So it's all your fundamentals, all your basic skills the students need in place, one covered per week week. So we can see here week three will be basic algebra and then there'll be some holidays. Week uh, six we've got inequalities and brackets, then we've got sequences and so on. Now you might be thinking what, what are these little dots here? Well the dots represent when quizzes are handed in because what happens with this scheme of work is every Friday students are set a quiz on the topic that's happened that week and they've got the weekend to do it and it's got to be handed in on the Monday. And then the Monday comes along and there's another topic and they do that and then they get set a quiz on the Friday and so on. So if I just show you, um, if I go into this week here, have a little click, you'll see there are two dots here and that's because there are two quizzes due on that date. One of which is from inequalities and in brackets, which was the previous week's quiz. And if I just give you a click here, I can show you some of the quality of the questions. They've all been written by Edexcel, but that doesn't mean this isn't suitable for AQA and OCR. There's some absolute, absolutely beautiful ones. And you can see it's focusing on the basics. It's getting these basics in place because there's no point doing all your problem solving and your, your higher skill level questions unless students have the fundamentals in place. So we've got inequalities, we've got brackets. Oh, I can imagine my year 11 struggling with that one a bit of factorizing expanding expanding and so on and all this is going to be automatically marked uh, the eagle-eyed among you will have also noticed what's what's going on here quiz two for basic algebra well what we also do with this quiz is every th three weeks after a topic's finished we set your students another <coughs> excuse me another quiz so the idea behind that is to test whether their understanding and their knowledge has been retained, whether it's deep enough. So for every topic, if I just go, if I just go back to this look, look at this page. So students will do factors, multiples, and primes. They'll get set a quiz the Mon uh, the Friday that that topic's finished. But then they'll also get set a quiz on factors, multiples, and primes three weeks later, if that makes sense. And they're always set on a Friday, always done over the weekend. All right. So that's the kind of idea behind the scheme of work. But how do you manipulate it to make it suit your revision plan? Well, I'll show you. It's dead, dead easy. This All you need to do, click on this little pencil tool. And this is your edit scheme of work function. Now, the first thing you might want to do is change the name of it. So you might want to put, uh, I'm going to call it Hogwarts revision, whatever you want to call it. Uh, don't worry about the start date. That doesn't matter there. Um, and in fact, what I'm going to do, I'll also change the title there just so I've got it nice and consistent. Yep. So don't worry about the start there. Don't worry about the length. You don't, you don't have to do anything with that. Here's your scheme of work and you'll see each topic is one unit, which makes it dead, dead easy to manipulate. Now, here's my piece of advice for you. Decide when you want to start this scheme of work. So, for example, I might want to start it on the first week back after the Christmas holidays, so the 2nd of January. 
That will leave me, if my maths is right, with three topics that have already gone and 17 topics that remain. So what you need to do is choose which 17 topics you want your students to study. And crucially, choose which three you don't want to cover in this scheme of work. Now, that doesn't mean you can't set these at a different time and all that kind of stuff, but just choose three that you don't want. So say, for example, I've chosen linear and nonlinear graphs. I'm not going to study those in, the, in this 17 week period. What, what you do is you just need to move them to these top three positions. So linear and nonlinear graphs, I'm going to grab it and I'm gonna chuck it in there. Let's say angles and polygons, I'm not gonna do that. Now, if when you're dragging it up, it doesn't move up the screen, just kind of drop it off here for a little rest and then move it up there. So there's my second one. And let's say as well, Pi. oh no, I wanna do Pythagoras and trig. Let's say sequences. So let's take him up, drop him off there and then move him to there. So can you see, I've got three topics in place. Now my holidays move there, so I'm gonna put that back in its right place as well. So grab that and drop that. So now you see, I've got my three topics that I'm not gonna study and my holiday. And now I've got 17 topics to play with. And then it's simply a case of deciding your order. Now, always start from the beginning. So if you want to study ratio and proportion first, grab it, drop it, everything updates. If next you want to do a direct and inverse proportion, keep the proportion train going, drag it and so on. You may find your holidays move, so feel free to put those back in place, but always start at the beginning, grabbing things and chucking them in the right place and so on. And eventually you'll get your 17 topics all in the right order. And obviously I know I'm kind of, I don't mean to be patronizing here, but if instead you want to start it on the 1st of February, then instead of um, leaving three topics there, you'll also leave these one, two, three, four topics as well. So decide what topics you're not going to cover, stick them at the start and then build up from where you want your scheme of work to start and that's all you need to do dead dead easy see i promise you i promise you it's all right this um, and when you've done that that's it saved that's everything done there just click back to the calendar and you'll get a chance just to have a look at your scheme of work, just to check that it's all in the right place. You'll see those ones that I move, linear and non-linear graphs, angles and polygons there at the start and so on. And once your scheme of work's built like that, all you need to do is click on this little tick button here, and this is where you assign it. Now, all you'd need to do there is have a type and um, all your classes that you've got um, in your school will, will come up here. Now, it's up to you. You can um, assign this just for your class if you want, or if you're a member of other classes, perhaps um, you're head of department and you've, you've put yourself down to belong to other classes as well, feel free to assign that to those classes as well. It's, it's completely up to you. Or individual teachers can just set this up for themselves. Um, just click on the particular class, click assign, and it's done and dusted. As soon as you click assign, from that moment forward, your students will be automatically set those quizzes. Hope that all makes sense. And um, as I say, it, I promise it's, it, the questions are fantastic, all written by Edexcel. It's gonna give real kind of purposeful practice for your students. The fact that they get a quiz at the end of a topic unit is gonna be immediate revision. And then three weeks later, they get a follow-up quiz to test that level of understanding and so on. Um, and fingers crossed it's going to help build their confidence. It's not going to take you any time. That's your time sorted there. You're going to get the insights and check all the, all the data and all that kind of stuff as they come in. And um, the only extra thing I was going to say is, I'll just cancel that there. Um, you might want to encourage your students to download the student app to do this. It's completely free. They can do it on Android or iOS or whatever. It just means that they're going to get notifications that they've got quizzes due and be able to answer it on the move as opposed to kind of trying to get older mum and dad's laptop and, and so on and so forth. Anyway, hope that all makes sense. Um, if you've got any trouble or, or any questions, you'll notice you've, we've got this little blue guy down here, this intercom. Give him a click um, and you, you can ask me or, or one of my team um, a question there. And also, if you want us to upload your year 11s for this, just send us a spreadsheet with their first name, their surname and their class code. Um, attach, it to, uh, attach it to this. You can do it like click new conversation, then click that little... Uh, paperclip tool and we'll upload your year 11s for you if you want so there you go that that's a very brief but hopefully useful guide to your scheme of work hope you found that useful and i hope your students do too take care bye for now